Hey, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the late one with myself. And uh, happy uh, today is what should I say? Today is um, International Women's Day. Yes, what do that mean? International Women's Day. Well, I want to thank you so much for coming on. And uh, Abu Bakr Masood, Libya, good afternoon. I'm from the UK here. And uh, let me just do something here. Okay. Good. Well, you know what? I, I've been seeing a lot of, um, what should I say, messages going around today saying, Happy International Women's Day. Uh, happy Mother's Happy International Women's Day. Happy International Women's Day. So I said, well, you know, it wouldn't be wise for me to continue the rest of the day without doing a program on International Women's Day, what it is, yeah, to make sure that I'm actually um, speaking to persons about it. And I've got a couple of guests which I'll be talking to today about International Women's Day. Pharmacy Andrews, I really love that singing which you did. Um, that's that singing which you did. That's really powerful. I have to, um, Sharma. I, I don't know if you're around at the end of this. If anything, even to come on for a couple of minutes or so, that would be great. But I want to see if I can get money in. Let me see something here. I want to go straight. I want to go straight, straight, straight at this whole thing with International Women's Day because I, I believe it's very important that I touch into it. And and I've decided to invite my good colleague all the way from Canada. Um, I, I can't see her yet, but I think she's sitting in her car. I think I've seen ESP Vision. Um, ah, yes, yes, yes. Yes, she's there. Can, can I hear you? Are, you? are you there? Yes, I'm here. Can ah, you hear me okay? I can hear you loud and clear. Loud and clear. Awesome. Loud and clear, Monique. And, um, you know, they said international women a, a crucial day. But ladies and gentlemen, I want to tell you something briefly um, about Yanni, about Monique. You know? Yeah. I think, I, I think a couple of persons may have seen you, Monique, and they're actually calling me wondering, wondering um, why you're on. Do you know why? <laughs> uh, Money, do me a favor, yeah? Tell us who you are. <laughs> Tell... <laughs> um, I'm a Jamaican. <laughs> I mean, my social location is uh, many things. I'm a woman, I'm a wife, I'm a mother. It paused. You know, um... I'm, you know, I have a background in software engineering, then I studied marketing, and then I got married. You know, I've, I've worked in software engine, market-based software, software-based market research companies, um, worked in hospitality, but then, as I said, I got married. Yeah. And uh, so then 10 years of being a wife and a mother uh, really, you know, changed me quite a bit, changed my career path as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, more recently, you know, I had an experience uh, previous prior to living in Vancouver, we lived in Calgary in Alberta, and I had the opportunity to work with people experiencing homelessness. And it was a very eye opening experience. And uh, through that experience, I decided to pursue my uh, social work designation. So that's actually currently um, something that I'm pursuing right now. So when you talk about social justice, when you talk about women's issues, uh, these are things that I'm actually very passionate about. And just in general, though, you know, I love people. So it yes. um, just happens that I happen to be a woman and I'm happy that you invited me today. Yeah. Well, well, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to let you know that when I started the Silver Show for my social network bit, um, it was Monique who actually set the stage and gave me some notes. Actually, she was my my default coach. In the, whole, in the whole matter regarding that. And I'm grateful for you for that. But the reason why I want to get you here before you actually pick up your children, and I want you sitting in the car, they're waiting for them. <laughs> I just want to make sure. Uh, 
International Women's Day. Everybody's talking about International Women's Day. And I said I couldn't mm. go for the rest of the day without having a couple of ladies to say what International Women's Day is and what does it mean. And if you can share with your own words, uh, Monique. Sure. I mean, International Women's Day, uh, we, we know we were jesting earlier that we should be celebrating women every day, which is correct. But um, International Women's Day is really an opportunity to celebrate achievements, but also to highlight issues, okay? Um, the whole goal why the day was started back in the early 1900s was to realize gender equality, you know? So that really is the driving message of celebrating the day. It's all about achieving, hopefully one day, gender equality. Mm. Well, one of the things I was, I was reading up and um, I was getting some sort of background into this, it's after the Socialist Party it is celebrated on March 8th every year, a focal point in the movement for women's rights. After the Socialist Party of America organized a Women's Day on February 28th, 1909 in New York, the 1910 International Socialist Women Conference suggested a Women's Day be held annually after yep. women gained suffrage in Soviet Russia in 1917. Right. Now, could we say then that um, women have the right to vote? Um, there, there's level of equality to a certain extent. Um, could you say that it, we are at the point now where all is well? Women are, there's an equality, a pay gap, everything. No. It's all sorted? No, there, no, unfortunately not. And actually the projection is that, I was reading an article as well earlier, a projection is that it's another, it's going to take another 100 years, 100 more years to get somewhere closer to equality sure and you know it's also we have to consider which country are we talking about right because the uk or canada is more advanced and say for example just as an example it was just back in what 2015-16 that women got the right to vote in saudi arabia yeah. to just just the other day so it depends on and, which and country driving, we're talking about and, be able to drive cars. and driving exactly yes, yes. exactly so there's a lot a lot of work still to be done um you know, a lot of work still to be done. And 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 we're going to say, okay. So, what would you say then, from your perspective, are some of the challenges which are left for women? I, I say left for women because um, it is a continual process at the same time. It is. Yeah. It is. Um, you know, just not to prioritize any one point over the other. However, points that often come top of mind for me is, for example, the pay gap, you know, yeah. here in Canada, you know, for when we're talking about equal work for equal pay in Canada, it's estimated about 87 cents on the dollar that women get paid for the same work, yeah. you know, so we talk about that, we talk about the pay gap, um, we talk about, um, yes, the glass ceiling or women being excluded from C-suite positions, um, we talk about women trying to re-enter the workforce after having children, Yes, you know, depending on how long you've been away from the workforce, there's a lot of things that work against us um, that shouldn't be the case, you know, so, um, uh, and supporting, supporting mothers and families too, if I'm, if I'm going to talk about that, um, specifically, um, supporting mothers and supporting families, you know, what about women going back, but they still want to breastfeed, you know, um, to be allowed the opportunity and the privacy to do that, for example. So there, there's so many different issues. And, um, and one thing I also want to make sure to point out, um, that's another social media post that I just shared, uh, the, earlier this morning is that, um, basically when we're talking about, uh, gender equality, we're really talking about human rights. You yeah. know, it's, it's really human rights because um, even just the binary of male and female, I mean, it's much broader than that now, right? Yeah. Um, LGBTQT and so on. And um, it's, it's really about human rights because injustice against one group is injustice against oh, many groups. Yes, yes. You know, there are a lot of different intersections. Yeah, yeah. And, and also, when you talk about the, the, the International Women's Day, I saw a few posts by a few men by saying, every day is uh, Women's Day, really. Um, what, what's a big deal with specifying a particular day? Without women, no man would be around. But everything is all messed up now, Molly, because what we're seeing is a situation now where men can have men, they're wanting, pushing for men to have children. You know what I'm saying? Is that, is that messing up the whole psyche of the woman? <laughs> 
help me to understand what you meant by that. Well, um, with the whole LV, LGBT movement and the whole transgender thing, yes. they're talking about men yes. are able to have children now, um, eventually. Mm -hmm. So is that putting a whole spoke right. into the whole thing of women? No. No, I think it all works together, to be honest with you. Yeah, yeah, I think but, it all works yeah, together. Because... Yeah, but, but I'm going to stop you there because they're saying we don't say women and men. When they're going to start saying they. <laughs> and you know, I agree that it can be confused. It can get confusing because um, even now, as I mentioned, um, just studying in this area and um, the, we got to be aware of pronouns that you're using, you yes. know, how are you addressing people? It's not just a binary anymore. Mm. And um, it, so it is, it is interesting. But when I, when I initially started to say that it all works together, it's kind of going back to my point that injustice against one group sort of is injustice against every group yeah. or you know other groups and so it sort of highlights it highlights issues across the board so you talk about say it's transgender well what if you're also marginalized by your race suppose you're also marginalized by your age suppose you're also marginalized by ability yeah you know um so it all that's why i said again it's, it's really about human rights to be honest with you but in this particular day we're talking about um women and mm -hmm. um and uh, that's an important talking point because when women are excluded, for example, in the um, in the work environment, for example, or from the decision making uh, uh, meetings, you know, we're losing expertise. We're losing expertise. And um, if you think if you think about um, shopping, you know, who does most of the shopping, anyways? <laughs> yeah. um, you know, for the households, usually, you know, in a lot of and and don't quote me now, um, as in it's not like some fact written somewhere, but it's a lot of women. It's a lot of women that are are going out and taking care of that responsibility. So if we're included in those marketing decisions, you know, just you know, just as a point, um, there's a lot of uh, a lot to be gained from including women. Yeah, that that's powerful. So so therefore, so therefore, it is it is a, a day to really celebrate. I, I personally believe that every opportunity to give a plus to something is good. Um, uh, sure. Black is Black History Month. Some people say we don't need Black History Month. I always say, give it a plus. Any plus is something which is good to identify a particular movement or some sort of agenda. You know. And, and, and that's just it. I mean, if you, if you, you have to look back at history, if you think about the history of marginalization, you know, um, mm -hmm. or the dominance by, it, uh, by one particular group, and let's just say like, you know, the patriarchy then, and I won't even specify the white male or Eurocentric patriarchy. I won't even go start to go there, but um, it, it's really about the history, you know, of all of these years of injustice and how it actually has set us back. And that's why we're trying to gain these achievements, you know. And um, and the other point, again, is, you know, I don't know if I mentioned earlier, but being talking about pro, for example, pro female, just to put the binary for the yeah. moment of this point, the, not when we're saying pro female, it does not mean anti male. I love you know, men, I love my father. I love my brothers. I love my husband. Yeah. Um, you know, so I love my son. Uh, so pro, pro female does not mean anti male. It's just like when we talk about, um, you know, think about racism and we, let's just say, um, in the, in the U S um, you know, there's uh, I forget some of these, um, hashtags, but it's the, you know, pro black, let's yeah. talk about black history month pro black does not mean anti white, you know, it's just that, um, the, we're, we're trying to level the playing field at the end of the day. That's what it is. It's about equality and trying to level the playing field. Um, same thing, again, talking about um, the Me Too movement, just as an example. You know, sexual harassment um, against women, and, and I'm just going to specify women, you know, that, that's why that Me Too movement had to get started. Um, it was primarily in the entertainment industry, if I, if I remember correctly. Um, and yeah. that's where it sort of got the big push from. But we experienced um, sexual harassment in the workplace. I mean, I've, this is a different show, but I've experienced sexual harassment, um, you know, like significant uh, events that occurred when I was 16, 19, and 25 years old. So there's certain uh, topics that, you know, like once you personally experience something, it's just a whole, you see everything in a whole new light. You know, again, we're talking about women in the workplace and um, just, uh, I, I, for example, I have um, uh, a cousin of mine, I hope she doesn't mind, but yeah. I'm not going to say her name, but when she, I remember her, um, I, don't, I don't even think she had her, her, her child as yet. 
However, she got, she was recently married and uh, she was re-entering the workforce because she, you know, she had, uh, she was changing jobs or whatnot. And she, I remember her going to that interview and she, she specifically said she did not wear her wedding band yeah. because she did not want the topic to come up. Um, oh, you know, if it's something about her marriage or something about her spouse, she didn't want it to come up in any way, shape or form, yeah. especially being a newlywed um, with the assumption that, oh, you're now married. I'm sure you're going to have children. And that's not always the case, yeah. but I'm sure you're going to have children. And so mm, if we hire you, how soon are you going to go off on maternity leave? You know, so um, and that shouldn't be the case. She shouldn't have been so concerned about that, you know, Um so that there's there's just so many so many different issues so many so, different so, issues. So in in a, so in a way, um, it is some level of legislation which has made it um, more possible for women to have that level of um, protection. Let's say the word protection there, because what would happen is that uh, once a, a lady is pregnant or whatever like that, sometimes they'll want to um, you know dismiss them once after that nine months or whatever like that. Mm -hmm. Of course, you know. But anyway. Um, it is good. I think, I think you know, I, I said to myself, at least to have something in, in some respect to, to, to do my checkbox, a tick box to say, at least. And I, 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 but, but at the same time, I shouldn't say that because you can see you're being facetious and fake because every, your mother, your wife, your family and everybody like that, um, women somewhat is like the backbone, you know, the, the matriarch. Absolutely. Of, of Absolutely. Society. I mean, women are the backbones of society, you know, um, I've always, that was just, you know, something that I always believed in. But as you just mentioned prior, now, you know, you have transgender couples that are, you know, um, or same sex couples also that are raising families. So again, I maybe it's coming to the point now of just empathy and how we're raising families and how we're bringing the next generation, you know, um, the, the, it's, 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 for example, if you think about um, the feminist or feminism helping to, um, it's only recently that men, for example, were allowed to be fathers. When you talk about paternal leave, for example, yes. sorry, that's the point yeah. I want to get to, you know, paternal leave. I mean, it's just recently men were allowed to be fathers, you know, um, which is a shame. <laughs> so thankfully, um, that's, that, that happens now. Men can go off and on, on the, take their paternal leave. And um, when we think about um, toxic masculinity, you know, and again, some people hear a term and they're like, ah, it sounds so anti-male. Mm -hmm. um, but that's the term it's been given, toxic masculinity. And, um, you know, it's really um, just encouraging. So we're talking about that aggression then, you know, or not being in touch, not being empathetic then, you know, yeah. and or, you know, so raising boys, oh, boys will be boys or, you know, pressuring boys to man up, man up, you know, and you have a lot of depression, suicide you know, a lot of these incidents coming out of that. So, and it was interesting to me, actually, I don't know if you recall the, um, the you remember the Gillette ad? Yeah, yeah. The Gillette ad last fall. <laughs> and uh, I don't know, there's a lot of mixed emotions about that ad. But, you yeah. know, I, I don't know if you remember it and how you felt about it, but I remember thinking, yeah, this is awesome, you know, but a lot of, there was a lot of negative backlash, like, okay, for, well, and I get it, like, a corporation doesn't need to tell me how to raise my child, no problem, but I think they did a great thing, um, just highlighting uh, certain old boys club um, stereotypes that are perpetuated generation after generation yes. that need to, we need to just get rid of it, yeah. you know, we need to get rid of it. Well, 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 that's good. Uh, well, thanks for coming on because, uh, as I can say, I've seen the pictures, the images. Um, it, it is somewhat empowering, I believe. It's somewhat empowering for women, based on what I'm seeing, um, whereby they come together and they say they stand strong, they support each other, and they're working toward each other. And, and at the same time, it's like a day where they have this level of solidarity. And, and I believe that it's important for men to... Um, support that I'm listening yes that's exactly right and I'm glad you just said that because I was just coming for you silver and I was yeah. just coming for you men um have a significant role to um play in all the gender equality um and changing the mindset changing the narrative you yeah. know and uh, it's simple things being an ally to that to this movement then is um if you're an earshot of conversations that are you know not conducive to promoting gender equality to speak up yes you know so men have a significant role to play 
um, in this, you know, and back to the point, like, do you have a mother? Do you have a sister? Do you have a daughter? How would you feel if, you know, a man or a male, just to put the binary back for a moment, um, was being offensive to your mother, daughter, sister? You know, how yes, would you feel yes, about yes. that? Because sometimes yes. we, it's almost like we remove ourselves from situations until a, an incident hits you personally at home. Then all of a sudden it's like, oh, this is happening? Oh, I'm outraged, you know? So yes. if we could just be outward looking for a minute, not just inward li- looking and, and thinking about just our own lives, but like people in the world and society around us as well. Well, that's awesome. Well, uh, Monique, I want to thank you so much for coming on. And ladies and gentlemen, please look out for Monique. Um, she's going to come back firing, um, a spark, sparking up everyone, because um, um, you're going to get back and start doing those videos in the car, isn't it? Yes? I will. I will. <laughs> yeah. Thank but, you so much for having me, Ms. Silburn. Yeah, definitely. Thank you so much. And I, and I hope you may, when, on the replay, I'm going to try to get um, Tracy Humphreys on. She's going to come with a different skin as well, because I'm saying, let me get all the women on. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. So, so I'm going across to the United States now. Um, while you're in Canada. Fantastic. <laughs> social right. media is awesome. Awesome. <laughs> well, well, it's important what you said a while ago, that social media is awesome because um, people sometimes say it's a bad thing, but I say it's how you use it. It's how you Absolutely. use the social media. Because it has its positive sure. and it has its negative. All right. True. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Cheers. Thank awesome. you. Bye. Happy, mod- Happy International Women's Day to you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Cheers. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I had there um, um, Monique O'Reilly, um, hail from Jamaica, but based in Canada now, and I'm um, just giving a different perspective. And I'm going to try to see if I can get uh, Miss Tracy Humphreys on. Um, I, I, I jumped away from the United, from Canada, and go to the United States of America, and uh, and she says, she says, this is what Tracy said: Happy Women's Day to women all over the world. I'm thankful for the women in my life and the women in the world who love, nurture, support, educate, encourage, and care for so many people, which is a long epistle which she wrote on her page this morning I was looking at. Tracy, good. Is it morning? Afternoon? Yes. Well, hello, Silborn. How are you? Thank you so much for having me on at the 10th hour. <laughs> Well, as, as I normally say all the while, I'm, I'm easy and cool in Malibu. And people say, oh, you're in California. I say, no, it's a state of mind. It's just chilling. That's all they say, Malibu, <laughs> just relaxing and cool, you know. Um, ladies and gentlemen, Tracy Humphreys is an entrepreneur, motivational speaker, author, and workshop facilitator. She's gifted entrepreneur, travels globally to train and motivate professionals. She provides them with a state of art techniques and strategies to become their best selves. Um, but I want to say, I want you to, I said that bit, which is just a bit, but I want to talk about the the, the program which you have, the reconciliation, the, the rebuild the marriage. I just wanted to share that bit there before we, we get into the discussion. About yes, it. absolutely. It would be my pleasure. It would be my pleasure. Well, first of all, I want to thank you for uh, inviting me onto your platform and tr- entrusting me. Uh, to share on your platform. Uh, But yeah, just a little bit about reconcilable differences. Uh, My husband and I, uh, we started uh, this, you know, initially we didn't call it a marriage ministry, but other people started calling it a marriage ministry. So we said, okay, it is a ministry. And basically it's all about reconciliation. It's about, uh, you know, helping couples to reconcile. Reconciliation could be a couple having challenges in their marriage, uh, you know, and they're still together, but they're going through challenges and they're not sure how to overcome them. Uh, so we deal with that in our group. Um, you know, reconciliation could be a, a couple that's separated and, you know, they're not sure whether they want to get back together. Uh, but we we kind of what we were able to walk people through how to go through the process of coming back together if you so choose when you're separated mm-hmm. or even divorced. It doesn't matter. So really, we are all about reconciliation. And we understand also that more than religion or anything else, God 
wants us to reconcile, whether it's married couples, family members, friendships, because what happens is when people don't reconcile, they go off broken to the next relationship or to the next area of their life and they bring that brokenness and that frustration with them. So when you reconcile with a person, even let me use, uh, uh, you know, my husband and I as an example. Uh, in 2015, my husband and I, we went through a separation. Uh, we separated for two years. Uh, that's after 15 years of marriage. And yeah. during that time, God really dealt with me. Um, and I was able to uh, you know, change my whole uh, walk with Christ. He, uh, you know, I spent a lot of time in prayer. He, he educated me. He, uh, you know, recalibrated my whole life. <laughs> it was quite a situation. And during that time, I wasn't sure that I was going to, you know, reconcile with my husband. As far as I was concerned, I'm moving forward. But God dealt with me. And he dealt with me in the area of reconciliation. And so my husband and I, we got back together, praise God. And yeah. uh, during that time of us getting back together, we, we started back dating again. We started back uh, getting reacclimated to each other. And uh, during that process, we learned a lot about... Um, you know, going through changes in your marriage. We learned a lot about, uh, you know, sometimes you get together and your foundation wasn't spiritual. Yeah. And sometimes God interrupts and he puts in the spiritual. So we had to learn to walk with each other in a new way, in a very yeah. powerful spiritual way. And so that's where the whole concept of reconciliation uh, came together for us. And so reconcilable differences is all about bringing people together yes. because we're yes. living in a world that encourages people to be apart. And so what we're doing as a couple is we're encouraging people to stick and stay, work it out. Uh, it doesn't matter how, how perfect you think your marriage is or somebody else's marriage is. Marriage goes through ebbs and flows. Marriage goes through seasons. And so learning how to work through those challenges, work through those difficult uh, uh, um, seasons, learning how to pray together, trusting God together, uh, learning learning how to co communicate effectively, learning how to, um, you know, pray over one another when you're going through troubles. See, when one of the things I really want to share, and you could tell I'm very passionate about this. Yeah, yeah, one of the yeah. things I'm that saying, happened. It, 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 it's International <laughs> Women's Day. It's your day. <laughs> okay, awesome. Thank you. So one of the, the things that happened was when we were you know, going through a lot of challenges, one of the things that kept happening was I was speaking the challenge. Oh, you know, I'm going through this. Oh, we're going through this challenge. Oh my goodness. I just kept professing the issues instead of praying over my husband, instead of speaking the outcome that I wanted to happen, I was, I was literally prophesying the issues. And so what we, what we do is we're, we're, you know, we're encouraging people. So we put a lot of daily motivation. We put up a lot of thought provoking posts that makes people think. And we, and, and just for the record, we don't just talk to uh, single people, I, I mean, married people, we also talk to single people. So we put a lot of thought provoking posts up in our group where they can think about it, discuss it. And then we also have a one week, a weekly uh, uh, Facebook live. It's every Wednesday night at 9.30 PM Eastern Standard Time. And we talk about different topics. Uh, that affect couples or affect families. And so we could talk about anything ranging from uh, conflict resolution to finances to, uh, you know, uh, things to do to keep your marriage stronger. Yeah. We have a whole plethora of topics that we deal with that gives family food for thought and helps them in the process of their reconciliation. And, and just one more thing, reconciliation does not mean that you're separated or you're having challenges because reconciliation could be 
you know, maybe you had a rough day with your spouse and you need to apologize. Uh, one day I put up a post several weeks ago and I said, is there anything you need to apologize to your spouse for? And people were inboxing me and saying, thank you for that post, Tracy. Thank you so much because I did have some challenges with my spouse this morning. And when I logged in and saw your post, I was, uh, you know, Challenge. I was really, it, it gave me, a, a, you know, the reminder that I need to apologize. So it's stuff like that that we deal with. Well, that, that's wonderful. And, and, uh, and, and ladies and gentlemen, I've got Tracy Humphreys. And please follow her definitely from this page. Um, you, you'll have to stay up like 2.30 in the morning, Wednesday. <laughs> UK, that is UK time, of course, but it's all worth it, really. Um, now, now, it is International Women's Day. And uh, the reason I said, let me dedicate the, uh, tonight to um, International Women's Day. It is the, the time whereby women somewhat um, come together and celebrate it. Now, what, what's your, uh, there's so much thing which are happening now, whereby the question is, is the man, the head, is the man in charge? Is woman in charge? The, the, the feminist movement, the Me Too movement, it's like somewhat the world is somewhat in a tipsy-turvy. It is whereby you don't say, I, I, I said it to Monique earlier, do you say they? They're trying to say there's no he or she at the same time. It's in top to term, how do we do this realignment at the same time with International Women's Day? What is, what is your message? What do you, what's your thoughts on it? Oh my goodness. <laughs> so boring, Sorry, you just threw a lot at me. <laughs> yeah, you threw a lot at me there. Uh, you know, first of all, I want to say that I define myself as a, as a woman of God. Yes. I just want to put a pause there. I'm a woman yes. of God. And I, I'm not, you know, I don't talk about I'm a feminist, I'm a this, because once again, to me, when you put those things are labels, and when you put labels on yourself, you limit yourself, mm -hmm. right? And so, um, you know, I'm a child of God for the rest of my life, or a woman of God for the, you know, sometimes I say child, sometimes I say woman, because sometimes I really do come to God as a child. Uh, but I'm a woman of God. And this whole thing about feminists, I'm a feminist, I'm a this, I'm a that. Everyone is entitled to whatever they feel they are. They're entitled to label and categorize themselves in, in whatever way they choose to. But, you know, what's happening is, you know, the world, the world is a pie. As we were discussing the other night, Silborn, yeah. the world is a pie, right? And I, and I heard this from a powerful man of God recently. And what happens is we become divided when we start to categorize ourselves, put ourselves in so many different categories. Yeah. Um, and we separate ourselves, you know, when we separate ourselves by race, we separate ourselves by Christian denominations, by different, you know, we're, we're, we're living in a world where separation and I'm over here and that one's over there. It's no, it, it seems to be the norm. Um, but there's some people that's not buying into that. Some people are saying, you know what, we need to come together instead of pulling apart. And so, you know, one of the things about uh, National International Women's Day that I thought about today, that's why I wrote that very long post, because I wanted to show the variety of women, you know, the variety of roles that we play in, in our lives and different people's lives, right? And so, uh, you know, for me, National Women's Day means encouraging other women, edifying other women, um, you know, highlighting some of the most powerful things that they do in society. Because let's face it, uh, you know, some people might be saying, what's this women, not International Women's Day thing? And what's this, you know, why are women having to be acknowledged so much? And so men might be feeling a little left out. So, you know, Silborn, if you're feeling left out, I, you know, my brother, your time is coming. I just want to say that, right? Yeah, yeah. So, 
<laughs> so, you know, but men might be feeling a little left out. But the truth, Monique said it earlier. I heard her saying it's not about, you know, men's day and women's day and women being, uh, you know, edified and raised up. It, it's really about that acknowledgement. It's really about, um, you know, encouraging and motivating people, women, I'm sorry, women to be the best they can be. And when we as women are the best that we can be, we're the best that we can be for our spouses, for our children, yes. for our church, for our careers, for our families, you know? So when women are are powerful, when women are healthy, when women feel respected and loved and honored, they're able to function in a more powerful way in their lives. Yes, yes. That's really um, powerful. That's, that's really strong. And, um, and, I, and I believe in this world that we're living in now, and I keep, I always use the Lou Rawls scenario when they say, what is wrong with the world? Uh, Lou Rawls said, nothing is wrong with the world. It's the people that's in it. <laughs> you know, and, and God is a perfect God and everything like that. Um, but but as, as Monique was touching on some bits and pieces regarding the word equality, the, the gender gap and all the, the pay gap and all those sort of things, we, we are seeing at the same time where women are at the top of their game. You know? And, and, um, and at the same time, Men are at the top of their game, and do you do you believe it is it is leveling out, or or, or I think Yannick money could said, or someone said another hundred years. Do you believe it's it's leveling out? Hmm. You know, in some ways, um, it may be. I think that women are gaining justice uh, where they didn't have it before. Um, and just to bring up, for instance, uh, just to bring up the R. Kelly case, right? Yeah. Uh, because that's a, that's one of the examples, because it's just all over the media, all over social media, everyone's talking about it. So just to use the R. Kelly case yeah. as an example, um, you know, many years ago, R. Kelly was tried. Um, I read an article of his uh, attorney that that was that he originally used i think it was in 2008 or whatever yeah. the attorney actually recently said he was guilty yeah. of, right. of those charges he actually was guilty but he got off as r kelly said in his interview with gail right he was like well i got off so why am i why are these people coming at me again right yeah. and so he's feeling like he's being attacked you know, because his mentality is, look, I, I've been tried for this. I got off. So why are people still coming at me? I don't deserve this. And he's going off on a tangent. But the truth of the matter is women are getting justice in this case. So all the women who were affected back then you know the way that the, the 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 laws and everything is is being recalibrated now women who had challenges back you know back in the day they're now getting justice served right so yeah. rape and molestation is a big issue for women and so now you have uh, uh you know cases like R Kelly cases like Bill Cosby all of these cases it seems like men are being attacked but really if you look at it, women are getting justice. That's women right. yeah. are, there's a lot of women that are saying, finally, we're getting justice. Finally, these, uh, you know, horrible acts that were done to us um, are being acknowledged. They're being recognized as a real issue. People are now talking about molestation and rape as a real issue. And let me tell you something, there's so many women um, for for hundreds, thousands of years, maybe that's been raped, molest, molested, treated, you know, uh, uh, you know, inhumanely, yeah. right? Um, and and now women are doing things uh, 
more than any time in history that, you know, when you look at uh, what's going on in politics, when you look at what's going on in corporate settings, when you look at what's going on in businesses, women are rising rapidly. So there might be, a, a you know, men might be having a sense of, okay, so I guess we're, you know, we're the, we're being lowered on the totem pole, but it's not that. It's like a together, you know, we're rising. Now we're yeah. rising more together. Women are, are able to do things that they were never able to do before. I know I've seen uh, women doing construction work, uh, you know, work that was literally uh, slated for men, uh, professional basketball women. Now, you know, the, the pay and certain things still need to, to come up. Yes. You know, certain things need to be leveled. But the truth of the matter is so much uh, justice is happening. And I just think that that's a very powerful thing. Yes. Uh, so, you know, equality, I'm not sure if I want to say equality, because I think men and women play different roles. Yes. Um, and so, uh, you know, I am not a woman. And this is just you know, hopefully no one gets offended by this. And if they do, it's my personal opinion. I'm entitled to it. Uh, you know, for me, I believe that there are things that men do that women cannot do and vice versa. Right. So I think that there always needs to be a boundary with each understanding and respecting that women play a certain role and men play a certain role in society yeah. and in families. Right. Men can't give birth. Well, my God, I don't know. Maybe these days they can. And, and you know, who knows? Maybe yeah. that's yeah. next. I don't know. Right. But men. As of right now that I know of, men cannot give birth, right? And so, uh, uh, you know, and there's certain things that I just believe is innately put in us by God that that makes us female, that makes us women and vice versa. You know, I, I don't like it on Father's Day when women are, are saying happy Father's Day to other mm -hmm. women. Yeah. I think it's disrespectful. You know what I'm saying? Or vice versa, that if a father is raising children, women will say to him, happy Mother's Day, or people in general will say happy Mother's Day to a man. I think we're crossing boundaries that yes. is just going, oh, that's just tipping the scale and not in a good direction. Wow, wow, that, I, that, that, that's a mouthful there. And, that, and that's really powerful what, you, what you've just set up there about the world boundaries and about the world, um, not dismantling the world equality um, argument, but just trying to put things in proper perspective. Because at the end of the day, uh, I believe it's very right for a man to be uh, the, the head of the house, to be in a leadership factor. Uh, the woman mm -hmm. is not saying is below him, but she plays her rightful place at the same time, but it's, it's a proper order. Uh, we see the issues here in the UK with the the, the rise of the knife crime um, as well. The question is, where is the father? Uh, so therefore, if you say, where's the father? That means to say the woman has been the one who has always been the backbone and carrying the can at the same time. Um, so if they say, where's the father? There's a mother which is there and there's a woman which mm -hmm. is there and they play that fundamental role. So it shows very clearly that there need to be this complete meeting of minds and the meeting of the, the sexes coming together to become one. As we're mm -hmm. talking about, that, as the Bible sometimes says, that um, uh, when they become as one, they can do anything, become as one. That mm -hmm. doesn't mean to say they become a they. I mean to say, you know, when they're trying to fuse the sexes now to say that uh, mm -hmm. a man and a man stop saying all these female, male, he, she, you know. Mm -hmm. you know? <coughs> and, 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 I, and I believe with the world, you know, a, a, a day of, uh, of women, International Day of Women, it should be reaffirming mm -hmm. the whole issue of being a woman. <laughs> yeah. and, and, I hope, and, yes. I hope, and I hope that is something which is being reaffirmed out there, what a woman is. Because you, yes. have, you, have, you have different yes. agendas who are trying to twist up the whole aspect of the sexes. Yes. You know, really, I mean, 
you know, when, when you have anything that a male and a female do together, it's a collaboration. We're collaborating yeah. in life, you know, um, you know, Silborn, you're married, I'm married. And, and what do we do with our spouse all the time? We collaborate, we work together. Uh, you have a role, your wife has a role, but equally you're working together as one, yeah. right? And so that's what we do, especially uh, in, a, in a marriage situation. Now you have situations with women um, who are living, they're single parents and, and they're trying to, you know, figure out life on their own and how to raise their kids and everything. But there's many of them that get the men in their family involved or their, their mentorship, like quite a few single women or single moms that I know, they have, they seek out mentorship for their sons because they yeah. realize that after a certain point, you know, when the son is small, of course, it's okay. But as they get to a certain age, they need that collaboration of another male because there are things, naturally things that a woman cannot teach a young man or a man. And that is what's happening in our world today. The, the lines are being blurred. And so you have women trying to, to teach men how to be men and it just doesn't work. A yeah. woman does not know how to, uh, you know, how to teach a man to be a man. But I, I you know, I don't want us to, I don't want it to seem like it's bashing because I'm, you know, I, I, I don't want it to seem like this is a bashing session. But, yeah. you know, it, you know, National Women's Day, really, there's so many things involved in it. You know, uh, it's about justice. It's about dignity. It's about hope, equality, collaboration, mm -hmm. tenacity. It's about appreciation, us appreciating each other and the roles, the unique roles that we play uh, yeah. in, in, our, in our personal lives and in society. Uh, you know, I'm very proud to be a woman today. There's so much to say about women today. The women are doing some, I am, uh, women are doing some amazing things. I am amazed at women. I'm amazed at the speed of, of creativity in women today. Uh, the fact that I see some women doing four and five businesses, uh, you know, and raising children and, yeah. you know, being wives and everything. Times have truly changed for women. And so on this Nash International Women's Day, I just want to, you know, yeah. celebrate women and let women know that they're phenomenal. They're, they're amazing. They're incredible. They're, they're outstanding. Uh, and, and some of them, there's a lot of women out here that they are up against some odds, you know, me as an entrepreneur, sometimes I'm up against some odds, you know, uh, when, when my husband and I went through a separation, we lost friends, you know, we had to go through the, 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 sh the public shame of people knowing our personal or a little bit about our personal situation. And there was a little bit of shame and embarrassment because after 15 years of marriage, who wants to be labeled in a, you know, oh, they're separated or oh, they're divorced, right? It was yeah, a yeah. hard situation, uh, but I overcame the odds and I was able to um, appreciate uh, this life process even more, being a woman, uh, being a, a married woman who went through a separation slash divorce and then came back together and we're putting back the pieces together. Yeah. So I look at myself sometimes in the mirror and I say, you know what, girl, I am proud of you yeah. and all that you have overcome. And so today I respect and I appreciate uh, you know, women, and I have a lot of empathy for those women that are still in the struggle, but that wake up. I talked about it in my post, but they wake up every day. They put on their clothes, they put on their armor, and they go out there and they fight and they fight even yeah. when they're in pain. There's a lot of women, you know, struggling with relationship issues. Some women are sick. You know, there's women out there. I have to share this. Uh, my husband and I, a couple of months were in Dallas 
and we went to this restaurant to eat and I was sitting there and I, I don't know why, but my attention was drawn to this one woman in particular and she had on a baseball cap, but she was completely like completely bald. Yeah. But I knew in that moment, she either is recovering from cancer or she's going through the process. And I could just tell by her demeanor because she had no, he, you know, she, you could tell she had something. She was definitely challenged um, health wise, but you know what? That woman was cleaning the tables and yeah. she was still energetic and she still had a positive. And I yeah. said to myself, I said, you know what? Look at her. She's still out here, still working, still keeping on a good face. And so these are things that women do that should be celebrated, not just in the United States, not just in the UK, but all over the world. Yeah. You yeah. know, women that are women that have gone through, uh, you know, rape, molestation, people that are dealing with sex trafficking or whatever, and they come out of that and they pull themselves up and they become great things in society. And so I love the I love this International Women's Day and I just want to encourage every woman out there yeah. to keep fighting. Never stop believing. Never stop uh uh you know, never stop um you know, hoping and dreaming and planning, but most of all, most of all, never stop praying. Never stop believing. Yeah. Never stop reading the word of God and getting closer to God. Wow. Wow. I, I think we couldn't, we couldn't um, end it much better than that for at, at the time of, of 11 o'clock. <laughs> that, really, that was really spot on. And, uh, you know, you mentioned briefly, I just touched on this just briefly, when you said women are all fired up. Uh, I remember watching the State of the Union recently in the United States of America well, on television, of course, and all the, the new the new um, Congress ladies, they all stood up and they're all on fire, you know what I mean? The, our, the whatever people like of the, the politics or whatever, but there's just this new breed of fire, this level of excitement by women, which is to be celebrated as much as possible. Mm -hmm. So yes, yeah, so I, I would say uh, kudos um, to, to ladies and, um, and, and we have the, the men as well. We want to wish all women um, this wonderful day. Your post which you did, um, ladies and gentlemen, I'll be sharing that on my page because it is very long, but it's very, it, it is something that cannot be read quickly. It is something I believe yes. that's got to be digested slowly. Each different word. Yes, is different yes. It, it was, it, you know what, when I wrote it this morning, it was really in my spirit. It flowed out of me. And can I tell you something? The devil is a liar because I had typed that whole thing and I was making a correction and the entire thing got erased. Wow. I mean, I took some time to really, it was flowing out of me because sometimes I'll be sitting and things flow out of me and I'm like, oh my gosh, let me write that down. And I started typing it very quickly on Facebook because I didn't do yeah. it in a document first. I was just typing it on Facebook and and I literally put all the emojis at the end and I was going to make one correction and the whole thing got erased. So then I was like, the devil is a liar. I said, I'm going to think of everything I wrote. It's going to come back to me and I'm going to write it. I, that was a sign for me to do it again. So yes. I did it again. I sat down, I thought about it and I put it there. So because it was from the heart, it's not yes. a meme. I didn't copy it. it. It wasn't something I looked up on, on, on the internet. It literally flowed from my spirit. And yes. that's when it's the most powerful. And, and ladies and gentlemen, let me just read um, the two last paragraphs. I'm thankful for women. Um, ooh, let me just do this something here. I'm thankful for women who don't feel a need to compete with another woman because she recognized that God has a unique call and a plan for everyone. We are mothers, daughters, sisters, nieces, aunties, grandmothers, guardians, friends, CEOs, doctors, lawyers, judges, financial advisors, investors, business owners, teachers, educators, speakers, writers, bankers, financial advisors. Uh, I like we put financial advisors twice. I think that there's a, there's a message there for having it twice there because a lot of women, 
pilot, construction workers, nurses, politicians, reporters, directors, actors, cab drivers, janitors, chefs, pilots, human rights activists, and so much more. Cheers to women around the world. May God bless you today and always love Tracy Humphreys. Tracy, I want to thank you so much for, for allowing to, to share your heart and, and just with Monique as well today because I believe it is very important. And uh, I was saying that I wanted to tick box to say that I contributed to the day. But um, it is not a tick box for me. It is actually my way of actually um, being a part of the process. Because if it wasn't for my, my mother, my wife, uh, um, mm. I, I wouldn't be here, you know what I mean? And, uh, and, and that's, that's, the, that's a key backbone, woman, International Women's Day. Well, that's why they call us the rib. Yes, yes, yes. That's why they call us the rib. And it's it's very interesting. People should look up what is the function of a rib. When you look up the function of a rib, it makes you appreciate your wife even more. Yes, yes, yes. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you so much for, for coming on. And um, I'll end now with, with Tracy. And, and, and of course, you know, make sure you follow Tracy as well for the, the different work that she's doing. As you can see, she's a, she's a vibrant. Actually, we, we met in London many years ago, isn't it? At, at a networking event. <laughs> yes, we did. We, we have quite a history, a network marketing yes. event. Uh, you know, we've been following each other on social media and yes. conversing about controversial topics because yes. I am your uh, native Jamaican sister because I was born yes. in London. I was born in Lambeth, London. Okay. Uh, yes. But... Yeah, but uh, my family's heritage is Jamaican. So I was partly raised, I was born in London, partly raised in Jamaica, and then we moved to the United States, New York specifically, uh, when I was 10 years old. Yes, 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 yes. Fantastic. So we have quite, we, we, we're, we're, we're kindred spirits. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And the last word, um, Tracy? Well, for, well, yeah, you know what? I want to thank you, Silborn, for doing this. And it shows the strength of who you are as a man uh, to take the time out to acknowledge International Women's Day. So I want to thank you. I want to thank you for your work. And I want to thank you for touching on controversial topics. Uh, some of them are fun. And, and easygoing, uh, you know, but you you are a very powerful man in, you know, you're, you're building your own media, basically, and covering yeah. things that maybe some people won't be interested in, or maybe some people are not talking about it enough. So you having this platform, I think, is so powerful. Yeah. So I say kudos to you and thank you. Uh, for who you are in society and the role and the contributions uh, that you are putting out into the world because it makes a difference. Indeed. And and what's so powerful is when you do things like this, you know, sometimes it may not be as impactful right away, but this is a seed that you are sowing and it goes into the ground and two, three, four, five, ten years later, these seeds will blossom into a tremendous harvest. Yeah. So I just want to, you know, wish you God's blessing I wish grace and peace over your life for you and your wife and may your work, you know, as my words are speaking, may my, may my words come out uh, as seeds planted in your work yeah. and in your vision that the harvest will be great for you and your family. Awesome. So that's what I want to share. Awesome. Thank you so much for that. Much appreciated. And um, absolutely, and have a wonderful day and bless you to Lucian, your husband as well. Am I yes, <laughs> I will let him know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think he's on. He's been on commenting, so okay. you know he's been my cheerleader today. So I thank God <laughs> for him. I love you, babe. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, well, have a good night, and uh, we'll talk again, and we follow. We keep the pace as well. Okay. Absolutely. God bless you. Take thank care. You. Thank you very much, Tracy. Bye bye. Thank absolutely. you. Absolutely. Bye bye. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, um, I want to say thank you so much for coming on and uh, thank you so much for Monique 
um, O'Reilly and also Tracy Humphreys for coming on as we talk about International Women's Day. Um, timing has been good, one hour, spot on. And uh, and yeah, yeah, let's, let's, you know, the key thing I, I, I pick up as well is that we must always, as much as possible, um, give a plus. They always talk about, the, the, you can say the glass is half full or the glass is half empty. So I always say the glass is half full in that uh, while by many persons will say why have a Black History Month, why have a this day, I always say, well, why not? Why not just have the best things? Just encourage each other, bless each other as much as possible. And I believe this is a time whereby we've got to have this level of conviction of who we are in all things, conviction and not to be swayed very easily. And as Tracy mentioned a while ago, um, with the media and the platform which I've set up is just to give that other voice because what we are getting is so many different voices telling us what to do, how we should think. So therefore, if you've got other voices telling us what to do, how we should think, then I think it is well that we should also get our voices out there to tell us how we should think and how we should be as well. And I believe that is one of the most important things. So we've got to flip the script at time change the narrative because guess what we all have that sense of identity of who we are ladies and gentlemen my name is silver and i approve this message and i approve this post and please like and share it and of course um on the replay more people will see it and i'll put it up on youtube as well on silver tv remember to like and share on instagram and uh twitter and all the different works and it's all silver and i'm the only one in the world any other one is a fake or alternative fact Okay, so thank you very much and have a good night. Thank you guys. Peace out. All the best.